Well, we're back here. We're back again, guys. Uh, we're at Hardin County. This is Ghost Road Scenic Drive. About the road, Katie, and read the sign to them that you can hardly see. <laughs> <laughs> so, it looks like someone obviously shot up the sign. Um, but this was a road a railway that was built in 1904. Well, it started construction in 1903. Um, and the road cuts through the big thicket forest for about eight miles. And it was, it was to help transport oil and lumber through here with, with At one point in time, for some random reason, it was dismantled and abandoned in 1918. And now it's just a very large road. <laughs> yep. Well, the story is, if you come out here at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and you drive up through here, see you'll see a uh, train coming that you can actually see through like you would a ghost or something and the train comes and you see the lights and it just pass right through your vehicle and and if you look over this way let me see if you look over this way there's another the road goes on up that way across this one and up there is a set of tracks running this way parallel with this road and it's a, there's a logging road over there and a logging truck just left out of here before we started recording. So, but we're going to travel the road. There you go. Oh, hey, there's some a, pictures on there. It's a long ways down there. Yeah, there is a couple of pictures on them. I'm not sure if you'll be able to make them out or not. This is a picture of the railroad. And that one up there, they've pretty much messed up. And there's a couple more of these signs as we go along. Uh, but some, uh, a couple of them were removed or vandalized. You can see they like to vandalize stuff. And at the other end of this road, there's another one of these signs as you're coming in. And somebody spray painted on there, void. What else did it say? Was that all it said? Well, it said something else, but I couldn't make it out. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get it on camera. And it said void, which is uh, one of the searches for the Randonautica app. So maybe there's a pinpoint there on the Randonautica. And which we've tried a couple of them, and it just led us to people's houses and such. <laughs> all right. Go around there and get in and you drive. Bet. You need to practice anyway. <laughs> Girls got to practice how to drive. Car's already started. Yeah. Put your foot on the brake. Where's the brake? Oh, jeez. Oh. Use your right foot only. Put your left foot in the floor. Put your right foot on the brake. There you go. Now put it in drive. Pull it to you and then down. And you don't need to go very fast. <laughs> 20 mile an hour tops. Alright now. I'm going 15, Dad. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty neat down through here how everything, all the trees and stuff grow over top the road and it starts to look like a tunnel in places. Yeah. There's a few driveways going off of it and a couple houses.
Yeah, and I'm going to come back out here and do this at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It's pipeline. But I need to get my other camera so the night vision is a whole lot better. And we'll be able to see. There's a few, few turn offs, AVT, uh, ATV trails. We were coming up this way. We we're at the north end right now, headed south. And I kept looking in the mirror and I thought there was a white vehicle following me. And all it was was the light at the opening at the far end of the road. <laughs> and I've seen that for several miles. Is my phone over there? Yeah. We don't play on phones to drive though. Well, yeah, I was just wondering. <laughs> I didn't know if I like accidentally left it on the hood of the car or something. Oh. Yeah. Nah, I did that one time. Left it on the trunk. I left my video camera on the back of the van, you know, bumper of the van. I'm not in Ohio. I just got ran over. This time this girl here needs to get her driver's license. <laughs> yeah. This is a good place for her to practice. Even though it's like, what, uh, an hour from the house? I mean, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was about, I don't know, about 45 minute drive up here. No, it was an hour drive. Was it? Yeah, it was a full hour drive. This 105 is very, very long. Yeah, that is a long road. Well, so we're very far away from the County. When you get to the, the openings in the little driveway, slow down a little bit. Slow down. Okay. <laughs> it's a song. I'm on a pay phone trying to call home, Something is na 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 It's been years since I was back here. And the last time I was out here was like two o'clock in the morning, several years ago. And they, they graded this road with a grader. And when I was down here that time, it was a little bit wider. I remember that mud hole, so I slowed down like a whole bunch. Oh, there's a marker. Let's get out and check it. Yeah, it's just something different. Just put it in park. All the way up. Yeah. Keep, you're in reverse. One more. Up. There we go. There you go. Uh. <laughs> I'm surprised you let me drive I'm surprised she ain't making me a whole lot of nervous, really. Huh? Nothing. <laughs> Can you read this one? Ghost Road is also called Bragg Road locally, the ghost town, town of Bragg named for Confederate General Braxton Bragg, a railroad engineer who surveyed the area in 1901. John Henry Kirby operated a sawmill at the site. In 1903, the Gulf, Colorado and Santa Fe Railroad ran a spur line to Saratoga with a depot and hotel at Bragg that served rail traffic of people, merchandise, oil, logs, and staves. In 1934, the branch line was discontinued and dismantled. The Bragg Hotel was built by Otho Head during oil boom days. In 1910, Henry McLean, a Santa Fe bookkeeper, and his wife, Margaret, acquired and operated the hotel. And Margaret also served as postmistress of a population of more than 200 until 1921. In 1970 interview, Mrs. Ayer said something, 14 rooms or three, and all about six acres of land. At the time, we had 41 boarders, each something. I saved three full meals and prepared lunches for the men to take to the job. After McLean's death, Margaret married Walter Ayers, 
but she was widowed again in 1931. Rails were pulled on the Saratoga branch line business lane, but Mrs. Ayers continued to rent rooms occasionally until 1968. And R.E. Jackson, a railroad conductor whose route carried him through a portion of the Big Thicket, organized the East Texas Big Thicket Association. The goal was to preserve for posterity a sizable portion of the Big Thicket natural state. Jackson personally attempted to preserve a portion of the thicket by leasing 18,000 acres of land. Regarding this tract as a nucleus, Jackson and his followers agitated for both state and federal action to save at least 430,000 acres of the Big Thicket as a wildlife preserve. In early years, Jackson and his group were unable to generate enough widespread interest in the Big Thicket to gain political support necessary, but gradually attitudes changed. I won't call it any more on the all right. Interesting. <laughs> All right. Record me driving so I can actually prove to my boyfriend that I know how to drive somewhat. I did recount that. <laughs> no, on my phone. You'll be on YouTube. No. Record with my phone. You just tell him to subscribe to our channel. Here. Just <laughs> click the red button for like a few seconds while I'm driving. And catch me in the road. Oh, you should get me starting the car. Well, if this stupid seatbelt would just. Yeah. It doesn't want to... <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. You have to cut the... Did the AC start on its own? No, I turned it on. Mm. We're getting ate up by mosquitoes, though. Mosquitoes? Well, I can't... And this get windshield's filthy. My damn seat up there. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to... Shit. It's foot on the brake. Okay, there you go. Record me. It's recording you. Is it? Yes. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> I get the road. The road. Okay. Now you can stop. Huh? You can stop.
speed. There we go. We had a little camera difficulties here. <laughs> the other memory stick ran out. I don't see any vehicles coming. We're not going to stand here that long. And that's the way we came. Of course, I'm sure nobody wanted to watch 15 minutes of just driving down the dirt road. <laughs> Just back up a little bit and then just pull right in here. Hmm. Let's see if she can handle this job. <laughs> Pull it up in there. Keep going. That's good. All right, I was like. Well, we're not gonna go far. We got the um, <coughs> car open. Hey, right, well, here's the other one. Can we read this one? Saratoga history began on a heavily forested salt dome in the heart of the traditional fig thicket, big thicket. W. F. Cotton and William F. Har something led in the 1850s. The Richard Teal family came in 1863. The first schoolhouse was built in 1870, and in 1874, the Reverend D.M. Jordan organized Friendship Baptist Church. In 1879, P.S. was established a health resort with something, a bathhouse and a hotel. On July 11, 1885, the Galveston Daily News reported that Saratoga, with a population of 70, established a post office near the hotel. In 1865, cotton contractor Ward Von Harten of Galveston for the purpose of obtaining petroleum. Von Harten used crude tripod dark and pounded the first well to 100 feet but could go no deeper. Ben Hooks, his brother, and Dr. A.W. Wark formed the Saratoga Oil and Pipe Line Company November 16, 1901. The Hooks number one came in, producing 25 to 100 barrels per day. At 980 feet, Hooks number two blew out on March 13, 1902. Almost overnight, Saratoga became a bustling boom town of 10,000 residents. W.E. Bryce bought 80 acres from Cotton in 1902 and laid out the old town township. Middletown was further west to present Saratoga sits, and Depot Town was located near today's precinct number three county barn, the southern terminus of the branch line. 1910 folk of Saratoga appear more interested in the photographer than the stomp, spe stomp speaker on the right. Bruh. <laughs> Let's get to that last sign. Alright. There's the south end. Yeah, I've heard you say that one. And here we're at the 
again, and this is uh, 787 here. Oh, uh, here's the beginning sign here. There's somebody spray painted void. Yeah, I'm just trying to find something. And I doubt we can read that one. Nope. But you know, I have pictures of those. Uh, but they're nighttime pictures. Uh, I'll see what I got that's legible, and maybe I can uh, post them up too. Well, here we are at the end of the trail. Um, I drove eight miles today, so that's a new record for me. Um, <laughs> we did some exploring, you know, but it's proven to be a swampy ground. Obviously, we didn't see no, you know, anything phenomenon, but. Hopefully when we come back in the night time, that'll be different. Um, but you know, another marker down, obviously, uh, someone spray painted that one so we can't read it to you. It says void. But you know what? We finished our travels. We'll see you on the next one.